<laughs> Janelle, get here now, and we're go. Oh, welcome to Thunder <laughs> Nerds. I'm Brian Hinton. I'm Janelle Pizarro. <laughs> and I'm Frederick Philip Von Weiss. And thank you for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do and do tech good. good. <laughs> tech. Mm. Hey, everybody, <laughs> speaking of doing tech good, Pantheon.io is allowing us to do that all year long. Thank you so much, Pantheon, for sponsoring the show. Uh, Pantheon, just so you know, if you are using WordPress or Drupal, Pantheon is the way to go. They have a, um, a dev test and live environment, so you can easily set things up, collaborate with your teams via Git, uh, easily deploy. They have probably the best support I've ever experienced on uh, any kind of service like this. Yeah, they have uh, pina coladas on Thursdays. They are the best. So go dancing in the rain with uh, Pantheon.io. Boom. Yeah, Frederick uses it too. Uh, I do. I use Pantheon every day. I love Pantheon. And uh, I guess speaking of I.O., Brian, I owe you a segue. Oh, Oh, that was fancy. I, oh, I, I should. I feel. I feel like I should just 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 sit here in silence now and not talk about that. That would make for an excellent podcast, Brian. Back to you. Yeah, I'm going to be at the Front End Design Conference in St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, April 25th and 26th is when it, it's it's going to be. We're going to be there. I think uh, actually just on the 26th because I think the 25th is the uh, the workshops. It's at the Palladium Theater, and we're giving away two front-end conference passes to two lucky winners. How do we do that, Frederick? Uh, either through Voodoo, Brian, or if you tweet, I want a, conf- a front-end conf ticket at Thunder Nerds. I can't say their tag, but we will put it in the show notes. I guarantee it. Yeah, and we'll pick two random winners from the ent- from the entries uh, live on the show with, uh, with Andy Vitelli. Uh, Andy Vitelli, with, uh, yeah. Okay, I said it right. Uh, Thursday, March 24th, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And uh, uh, Janelle, I think uh, I think you have uh, something interesting to talk about, too. Janelle. Yeah, right, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? I hope people are know. viewing in because Janelle has <laughs> something to talk about. Oh, okay. Do But do I? I don't know, Janelle, do you? Uh, Do we have a contest winner that we're going to talk about now or later? Oh, I mean, I guess later, because, like, right now is not an appropriate time because Janelle forgot her line. (laughs) Sorry, guys, it's not apropos at the moment. So we'll get back to see who is the winner of the view tickets. We'll view that later. So without any further ado, and let's go ahead and welcome our guest. We have Director of Product Design, Olivia Holy voo! Hi, it's Dine Olivo, 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 Olivo. I said it right. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Yeah, especially yeah. If you go back in editing, like when you listen (laughs) to audio podcast, I nailed it. I I spell my own name wrong sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) How do you you spell it wrong? What do you forget? I I'll, I'll usually end up putting two O's at the end. I don't know why, but that's a bad habit of mine. What you really do that? Or skip ends? Yeah. I thought you were joking. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I, that's awesome. It's a really bad habit. It's really bad. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's what yeah. these probably like came it's from like, childhood, right? Yeah. I, I I also add an extra e after after the for some reason. All the time. I mean, I, I like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you just want to be the little yeah. thing I do. The. Yep. I like. I like. How it. are you guys? Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're so happy that you could join us, man. Uh, you know, I think the uh, first time I met you was in St. Pete at the Front End Design Conference. It was. Speaking of uh, that. Yep. Yeah, they had a chocolate covered bacon that time. Oh, what? Yeah. I was like, what? Uh-huh. Yeah, those guys that live on the sweets. Not as good as chocolate <laughs> potato chips, let me tell you. That's Yeah, that's where it's oh at. my goodness. I think anything covered in chocolate or bacon fish ah. Ooh, you, won. <laughs> you win you <laughs> win well i mean chicken kimmy so i mean why can't fish <laughs> everything's good covered in bacon or chocolate but when you take bacon and you cover it in chocolate yes mm. that's that's basically just your dietary needs forever yeah. that's like 
the best. <laughs> so are you originally from uh, the Tampa St. Pete area or did you come here from somewhere else? I'm not. I actually grew up in uh, Massachusetts, Lawrence, Massachusetts, oh. small town uh, north of Boston on the border of New Hampshire. Yeah. Oh, nice. so, so how old were you when you came here? I was uh, 16 going on 17. So I was a big kid already. My parents were like, we're moving. And I'm like, oh, my friends, you know, that whole thing. But I came down here and I was like, actually, the weather's kind of nice, you know? So I was pretty chill about it. Yeah, once we got here. And just yeah. all the weird things in Florida. Oh, like what? Completely intrigued me. I don't know. It was like, like how it could be raining one minute and then the sun's out the next minute. And then it's raining again <laughs> and how, and, and how there's no actual sidewalks anywhere. This is something I noticed. There's um, no yeah. sidewalk. Like you, you can't north, really yeah. walk on the sidewalk here. You it, know, it depends where you are. Some cities are better than others, but you're absolutely right. Florida is actually the worst, uh, has the mo most pedestrian and bicyclist like injuries like of anti anywhere. Yeah. In the country. Florida is wow. so anti-pedestrian. That's, and, I don't know. The rain thing, my grandparents used to, I remember my grandpa would be like, it's raining. And then my grandma would be like, no, it's not. They'd be like arguing because it was <laughs> raining looking, in the front yard, but not the back. <laughs> He's looking out the front window and she's looking yes, out the back yes. window. <laughs> it was hilarious. What are you talking about? <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's just so hot in Florida that they didn't even consider building sidewalks. They were like, nobody's going to walk around anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's no sidewalks. And then. And then one thing we had was you can park, you know, here you can park anywhere on the street. Just anywhere. Just park your car anywhere. And up north, it was like you have to put it inside your driveway or you have to park on the left-hand side on a Tuesday because they're cleaning the right-hand uh, side yeah. at night. And, you know, so they have, like, parking times here and they have vehicle inspections. And, oh, you know, that's so... A that's a St. Pete area. Here, I mean, Blah. you can take a box with four <laughs> wheels and register it. Like, up there... <laughs> <laughs> they look under they were like this car has too much rust you can't drive it here it's like a tractor oh. sure yeah, well, yeah. Not go for it. <laughs> i got five of those i have five tractors out i here. got my work <laughs> tractor that i drive to work my saturday tractor oh uh, yeah on. yeah <laughs> the you want a good one. laugh go on twitter and look up hashtag florida man uh, oh yes, oh, everyone yeah. can see that. <laughs> you really get the good Florida it's, experience it's from that. Best of the best in news. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there used to be a, a news website that I visited. Uh, I don't, I can't remember the name of it, but they had a specific tag that for Florida story because it was just so ridiculous. But yeah. but <laughs> but Daily Show proved the reason why is because Florida has really awesome. Uh, open laws called sunshine laws that allow oh, yeah. people to get access to public records. And that's why you hear more about stupid Florida people than any other state. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. I'm not sure if I believe that. That's good to know. Look it I up. didn't know that. Yeah, Florida sunshine laws, the First Amendment Foundation, they're, they're one of the people that help keep those laws. Wow. Uh, that's okay. so interesting. Very Florida. So when you came down here from uh, from Boston, you said Boston <laughs> or Massachusetts? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, Massachusetts, Boston. Same. But, but specifically about gotcha. Uh, when you yeah, came from down the here, parts of Boston. Oh, okay. How did how did you um, how did you start getting your path? Where how did you start to begin your path rather in the design industry? So, funny story. I used to weld. Well, so, okay. What? Yeah. <laughs> I did welding, so like TIG, MIG, you know, flame cutting, you name it. Anything with the acetylene and the on fire, I was so into it. Um, so I I did welding because um, I went to a school that had the sort of, it was a technical school, so you would go one week to regular classes, and then the next week you would go into shop all day. Um, so I was welding and I remember I told my parents, I want to go to a school, no matter what, like I want to go to a school that has these sort of elective programs, these technical programs that you can, you know, sort of go to school and learn and learn a trade at the same time. And they ended up driving me across the bridge. When we came here, I moved to Port Charlotte, which is about 
uh, uh, an hour and 45 minutes away from here, two hours approximately. And I went to a school called Charlotte High and in Charlotte High, they had electives, but it was like farming and, you know, just trades that were typical for the area. Um, so I ended up in graphic and web design and agriculture. So, <laughs> so one day I would go and learn about HTML and I would learn about Macromedia Dreamweaver um, at that time. Uh, because actually, if you don't know this, Dreamweaver actually belonged to a company called Macromedia before it was bought out Adobe, by yeah. Adobe. Um, so uh, I would learn about HTML and graphic design uh, and all of that stuff, you know, and, and animations in Flash. Um, and then the next day I would go and take care of the emus and clean out the cow pens and, <laughs> and plant corn and all of that stuff. So I ended up leaving school with both things on my hand, but you know, uh, I'm not much of a farmer. <laughs> so I um, ended up working for the local newspaper in uh, Charlotte County. So I worked for uh, Suncoast Media Group. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I had awesome. a job at Dollar General and I remember stocking stuff up and, and saying, and I remember what sort of pushed me over the edge. And I said, you know what? I don't want to do this. Like I really want to get into design. And, and do something, you know, artistic, something related to design. And, you know, I knew HTML at the time and I knew how to use, you know, the, the you know, programs to create images and all that stuff at that point was mostly Microsoft Paint and um, I forgot what the other Corel draw software was, but I wasn't using Photoshop. Um, I was using Quark. <laughs> oh, and um, yeah, yeah, stress, yeah, Quark. Yeah. If you guys don't know Quark, Quark was uh, what eventually uh, InDesign ended up replacing. Um, yeah. what so that was. yeah, I remember what pushed me over the edge, and it was when I was at Dollar General checking this, you know, older older guy out, and and I was checking him out. So I was grabbing his stuff and you know beeping it. And I remember grabbing the box of a 12 can soda and I put my hand on it and gripped it and went to go beep it. And he said, don't poke the box of, don't poke my box of soda. And he got really angry and he made me go take that 12 pack of soda, put it back and get one that wasn't poked through the middle with the handle. You know how you poke a, yeah. a 12 pack through the middle? Yeah, so you'd grab it. And I looked at him and I was just like, Oh my God. And I had to go and put the 12 pack back and get him a new one and grip it by the sides and then push it off to the side. And at that point I was just like, Oh man, no, like mm. this is not for me. Time for a change. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so I put in an application to the local newspaper and they ended up calling me back for an interview. And I remember they had asked me, the same question, how'd you get here? You know, where'd you come from? And how'd you get here to Florida? And I said, oh, you know, my parents first came to Florida. They came to Miami and they're like, oh, nice. And and my the person who eventually became my boss said, uh, you know, a really great guy called Scott Toner. He said, what were you doing in Miami? And I was like getting jiggy with it. <laughs> at an interview, <laughs> at an interview. Hired. <laughs> I'm like, you sit oh, over there. Perfect. So <laughs> yeah. at that, you know, you know how your brain slows down and you do like this inner monologue in movies. Uh, I was yeah, like, yeah. you know, why did you say that? Why did, that you go good? To, did you say, did you really say getting jiggy with it? Because at that time, getting jiggy with it was a song and it was Please tell me. Na, na, did, na, 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 na. Jiggy with it. And you know, he was like, welcome to Miami, you know? <laughs> 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 It's all about no, I was just connection. like, oh, you know, getting jiggy with it. And he he laughed so hard. He gave me the job on the spot. Oh, my Not God. Because of how funny I was. And, and, you know, I spent three years making him laugh after that. And it got to the point where um, I had eventually met my fiance. And he 
was contracted in Tampa. And I and I said, you know what, I got to go. And and I left and came to work here for the St. Pete Times. Oh, yeah. So cool. You know, I, I think that brings up a really good point about, you know, it's not just about your skill set, right? It's about your, you know, soft skills. It's about making those connections. Because a lot of times when people will look to employ someone or fill a position rather, it's not just about, you know, can they do this? Can they do that? You know, you, you see so many people in a day if you, you know, you're, you're interviewing for a certain job, but it's about that human connection. Do you fit in our culture? Or, you know, are you a cool yes. person? You're not a weirdo? Like there's a lot of value to just being able to yeah. say something funny and make someone laugh. You know what? What you know nowadays is not good enough. Yeah. You can be the smartest person in the room, but if you don't have that skill, if you don't have the ability to make those connections with people one on one, then it, you know it, it's it's gonna get really hard for you. Because I know at Saitsu at Saitsus, we put a big emphasis, and I mean big, like 80% of why we hire people is do we like them? So when we have people come in and interview we talk to them and we're not looking for what you know because nowadays what you know you know it, it everyone's trainable anyone can yeah. learn anything especially in the age of the meta employee you know there there's we're in the age of the meta employee where it's you're no longer doing one thing you're no longer doing just this one thing at your job you have to be flexible to an incredible degree you need to be able to take on any challenge presented to you at any moment take it and run with it now is that a good and thing you think or a bad thing i feel like any i think it's a both a good and a bad thing it's a good yeah. thing for the employees because it pushes us to take on new challenges. It pushes us to learn. It pushes us to say, you know what? I don't know it, but let me research it. Maybe I'll, let me see what I can come up with. Um, but we no longer have these silos at work and we no longer yeah. have these sort of, uh, you know, SMEs, these, you know, subject matter experts that, that, that's what they do. That's what they know. So, I mean, a lot of the corporate companies are trying really hard to hold on to that structure, but I don't see it sticking around for another, you know, in another 10, 15 years, that's going to go out the window. Um, but really the only places I've been seeing where, where silos are holding strong are in these really large Fortune 500 corporate companies, companies like PwC, companies like Nielsen, like Deloitte, you know, these large, con, you know, consultants, um, these large firms, um, where they they have the resources and they have the money to pay employees to just be a UX designer. They have the money to pay you to be only an Angular developer. A specialist. But, Right. But if you want to be on the cutting edge, you want to work for these companies that are coming out like Uber, like Netflix, you know, these people who are trailblazing in terms of, you know, software development and, and products that they're putting out that are just blowing our minds. You're going to have to be super flexible. That's where the, the meta employee comes in. It's not about what you can do. It's it's more about, you know, can you be who we need you to be? Um, and on top of that, do we, you know, will we enjoy our time around you that the time that we spend around you talking to you and working with you every day Going i mean besides, right besides bes when you think about it beside you know besides your family who do you spend the most time with mm -hmm. <laughs> spend it with your employees you have to like these yeah. people and you're probably around your employees way more than your family half the time really when you think about exactly. it exactly you know, 10 mean, hours a day yeah. you have a wife you have a fiance why do you hang around them because you like them 
Yeah. Could you imagine ha having someone that that's extremely antisocial or doesn't want to learn or doesn't want to help you in any way, help you grow or present some sort of social and, and interpersonal challenge for you at work? It makes you miserable. And, and honestly, that's a big reason of why people leave companies. You know, we have mm -hmm. employees leaving companies. Sometimes it's not because of the challenges presented. It's not because of the hectic schedule. It's because they don't like Steve. You know, yeah. Steve. Steve, I swear. God. Let's take a moment for Steve. That, Steve. Oh my goodness. I'm serious. And I've done that before. Sorry, Steve. I, you know, I'm trying so hard to get along with that one guy and he's not budging. And I'm just like, man, it's bumming me out, you know? So, so yeah, I mean, I they, we don't work with us. We team. interview as a group. And if one of us is like, I don't like the fact that he did this and was like this and snippy and, and we're like, oh, okay, then, you know, he's, I'm sorry, he's not going to work. Doesn't matter. You can know, you can throw the book at us in terms of all the code, you know, and all the stuff you know how to do in Photoshop and Illustrator and all the tools, online tools and frameworks you know how to use. But, you know, uh, if no. you're not a nice person, there's I'm, nothing, there's nothing we can do. I'm curious, what do you say though, to the, um, you gave an example if you don't like them in that in that interview, but that's a that's a brief period of time too. I mean, unfortunately, people may sometimes come in and not have the right mindset when they come in. Maybe they maybe they just had a horrible day. Uh, yeah, they're nervous. So, I mean, what do you like? Well, how I mean, do people battle that when they come in? And they get they give the wrong first impression. I mean, do you think that's yeah, something that companies right. should I mean, address? They should. I mean, yeah. breaking up, you never want to go off just one interview. You want to pass this person through a couple of people. And if, I mean, we would say two or three people. So pass them by the product owner and have them an interview alone with them. Pass them by some of the sales guys, have them interview alone with them. And I know you guys are interview uh, the sales guys, interview oh, you know, the yeah. designers. And I'm like, of course the sales yeah. guys they interview the designers. I mean, these are the guys that are pushing and selling your product. You need to be able to get along with them. Yeah. There's nothing worse than having sales team who you don't communicate with, who's off selling features that are not feasible, that you haven't approved, that the developers haven't given the green light on. And they're saying, yeah, we can do it. Retina scanning, of course. And you're just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, we can make people oh, soup. You want to make <laughs> soup. I mean, like, you know, sales guys. Sales guys yeah. are out. That's what they do. They sell. They're going to want to excite the client. They're going to want to excite the customer. What you want to do is you want to get them on your side. And you want to say, yes, I understand this is going to make you your commission and you're going to sell and you're going to, you know, increase revenue for the company and eventually our bottom line. But here's a few things I need you to keep in mind when you're doing that, when you're mm -hmm. doing your job. Think about me, Yannette. Think about what Yannette needs to do her job, too. We're yes, friends. Steve. Remember, yes, Steve. we're friends. <laughs> Eve. So yeah, you know, everybody gives them a green light and we all meet and we're like, you know what? We like this guy. Yeah, yeah. I think he's cool. So we're really talking about individual contributors, right? Or are right. we also talking about people that are maybe um, uh, a higher echelon and, and up, you know, like uh, the, the C levels and things like that? Or, or what do you think? Oh, man. Unfortunately, you can only control you can only control what you do in terms of your own environment. Sometimes we don't get to pick our bosses, but you know, as someone who's been in that position before and is in it now, it, I'm a huge believer, a big believer in the, the philosophy of leadership uh, by servitude, servitude leadership. And I, I'm for, you know, have you guys heard of it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, servitude leadership. It's all about doing anything <laughs> pretty much to, to, to help your team succeed. And if you have to run and get them coffee, you run and get them coffee. And if you have to jump in and start renaming files one by one, uh, in order to have them jump on something else that, that you know, so that something else that they can take on, um, then then do it. It's 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 
pretty much offering yourself at any point in time to help remove any roadblocks to that eventual end goal. You I, know, I we want to work as a team to get there. And if that means me getting down on my knees and crawling around and make you more comfortable, then yes, let's do it. Yeah. I, I love the example you put too, of like, you know, if, if you have to go out and get your team coffee, if, whatever you need to do, if you have to hold up a boulder so everybody could crawl past, right. you know, right. or, or hold up the bridge rather, like it's, right. it's not about somebody sitting on the sidelines. It's about participating. Right. And as you said, filling in those gaps yeah. and yeah. being an example yeah. and, and, helping your team in any way that you can. Yes. If, if you are, if you start to self-reflect and you start to think, what do I need to get? What do I need to do to get there? And you start to think, okay, I want to be a boss. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. I want to be a manager. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, because it is, I mean, it's really taxing and, and, it, you know, you take on a lot of responsibility, but at the same time, you're taking on the emotional backlash of anything that goes wrong within the team. So you need to know how to juggle that properly. You know, you need to be the kind of person that's strong enough to juggle that properly. But at the same time, remember that we're talking about people that need to like each other. We're on a team and we're around each other 24-7. Am I gonna sit there and make your life miserable no i'm not the type of leader to try and exert power over you that's not the definition of a good leader you, you know if you're self-reflecting and you say i want to be a boss because i want to push people around then that probably means that you won't be good at it um right. you know but if if someone that's says that's actually uh, funny that's yeah, funny, like that's a funny image. Like, I want to be a leader because I just really want to push people around. Yeah, I, I don't want because I don't want to work anymore, and <laughs> and I don't. Man, you do, it'd Brian. be so cool to sit there and tell people what to do. Especially then Steve. you're probably doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, well, yeah. How do you get those Steve? Uh, <laughs> how do you get those people? Uh, you know a lot more people involved in doing that kind of leadership role. Um, you got to start. Of, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like for example, you know, I think I see a lot of the times designers are very much in that, that mentality, uh, uh, you know, having someone be like, you know, Hey, I am technically, yes, I am the lead of all of these design people who are fantastic, yeah. but like, you know, Hey, if you need me to like literally just, you know, stare into the the ether because like maybe I'm like being a little too much for you right now. I will do that. You know, like they're very supportive of each other. And I think that's amazing. How do we get other teams besides designers like doing that kind of, you know, uh, leadership and, and, you know, also kind of like bridging that gap of like, hey, I'm a designer and I do things this way, like with my team. Uh, maybe you guys are developers, how we do it this way and it works for us maybe let's try to figure it out. How do you get those teams to do that? That's where your sort of meta employee comes in. And, and it really does start at the bottom. It starts with getting yourself involved in what other people, other departments are doing. Again, I'm so anti-silo. Um, you're a UX designer and you work for Firm X and Firm X is, is, you know, they have all these developers and there's something going wrong. There's something going on where what you design doesn't come out looking the same way when it goes to development. Get in development, get in there. The one way you can do it is going to the developers and saying, what can I do to help you get this out faster? Do you need me to prep the CSS? Do you need me to go in there and, 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 and save out all these files? Do you need me to go in there and start slicing? Do you need me to go in there and start building some of these HTML components? I mean, pretty much anything, anywhere you can help, the more you can do for the developer, the more comfortable he'll feel leaving decisions up onto you. 
so that you can come in and make sure that they're up to your standards because you're the one doing them, you know? But the thing is, the more you get involved with them, they start to understand where you're coming from. And there's this synergy that happens between two people that are on totally opposite ends where you guys are now working together to that sort of same end goal. You just want to get there. Um, another thing is when you guys think about the meta, you know, when you guys think about, okay, I'm a UX designer. That's all I do. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. But if you want to stay in your silo, you can 100% be totally good with being a UX designer, but let your devs in and let your sales guys in. One thing I like to do is whenever I come up with some type of design or we develop a design, I go to the sales guys and I'm like, bro, look at this. It's coming up. Oh, my God. And they're just like so psyched about it. You know what they start to do? They start to tell people, hey, we're thinking about doing this one thing or this one feature is coming up, which drives their sales. And then I go to the developers and I show them, I'm like, look, oh my God, look at this design. What do you think? You like it? It's not, and get their feedback. And you make them own the design as well. You bring them in, get don't them keep them out because then you know what that makes them feel? They makes them feel cut off and it makes them feel like they don't have a say. And then you know what happens is they try to get a say. And the way they get a say is by turning you down. So mm. you come up with this design, it's amazing. You've kept them out of it. You pretty much pop it up one day in a meeting and say, we're doing this now on this sprint. The developer, feels like they have zero control and they will try to get that control back by saying this is this can't be built this can't be built but if you bring them in from the beginning and you accept some of that feedback that they have to give you're technically implanting the seed of ownership in their heads that you know what they are involved in this process technically this is a design that they contributed to they will work just as hard as i'm you know so it's letting people in just don't be afraid designers are so territorial about the stuff that they that they create and and the thing is i mean it's beautiful yes it's feasible yes you know it, it's the best thing in the world yes but remember, you're not alone. You can't, you, you know, you can't build a rocket ship by yourself and get to outer space by yourself. You need the scientists. You need <laughs> NASA. You need all those guys to help you get up there. You know, you say reach for the stars, then you're going to have to bring all these people in to help you. You know, well, you, you, you also, uh, one of the points, sorry to interject, but you also need to um, make sure that these things that you're designing are actually feasible, right? Yes, yes. And you need the developer to tell you if it's even possible. Hey, can yeah. we get this, this and that? What do you think? So what I do is I will sit the developer down and I'll ask him so many questions. I'll be like, do you think this? Do you think that? And I will ask them so many questions to the point where they feel comfortable enough to give me feedback. Well, when you look at this, what do you think about that? Even that, even color changes. I'll be like, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, and I say yes to everything and probably do about 30% of it. <laughs> I love it. A hundred percent of the feedback because I want everyone to own it. I need you to own it. I need you to own it and everybody to own it. The more people own the design, the less friction, the less pushback you're going to get when you go to actually build the thing. When you go we to all put it out. out to be our boss now, just saying yeah. we're oh. we're all totally sold. Where do you work so we can work there too? <laughs> be there. Yeah, that's the thing, <laughs> the designers are so hung up on the fact that it's their design and they get to put it in a portfolio. But really, what you want to do is, you want to be able to say you did something. Yeah, I created this beautiful interface, but that's it. You created a beautiful interface. How about you can take your actual you know, resume and say, you increased revenue by 20% in Q1 of 2018 because you put out this brand new feature. You know, this is awesome. You, That's the stuff that 
that you know the business side looks at when it comes to hiring good directors yeah. or good people in leadership because the people in leadership yes they they help they lead they remove roadblocks they remove any challenges that the team has and they help keep everyone's eye on the ball but they also have to turn around and report to the business and tell the business what they're doing and their decisions have to affect the business's bottom line. So it's not just beholden to the people that report to you, you're beholden to the CEO and the founder and the you know, CFO and everyone else on the business side. You're beholden to the sales guys. So that's, that's sort of the deal with product development. Um, so yeah, yeah really, it's a beautiful design, but yeah. how is this going to make us money? <laughs> yeah, how exactly. much time are we going to spend building it? How much in resources is it going to take us? And is it worth it? Will we make that money back? Is this feature important enough and impactful enough for us to make that money back? Mm. Yeah, it gets These back. All, all this is uh, just everyone is a designer and uh, that the whole philosophy and that uh, designers need to get over it because everyone has a voice and everyone should be communicating. It all barrels down to communication, communication, yeah. communication. Yes. <laughs> Wait, yes. To, to what? Uh, communication, Steve. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Oh, no. <laughs> you know <Poor> what? Steve. <laughs> There's a mural and everyone has a paintbrush and everybody goes and paints a little portion of it. In the end, that person drives by that mural every day and they say, I painted that. Did they paint the whole thing? No, they didn't. But they painted a little bit of it. But they still feel like they own it. It's theirs because I painted. Painting. That's yeah. my painting. I contributed. I I contributed to it, and that's all it takes. It's just a little bit of contribution. And if you can go in there and make something twelve pixels rather than thirteen, just to to make Steve happy and feel like his input it you know was taken into account and was taken into consideration and it's actually implemented you know, that's the best is then steve I, I think you bring just up, as hard to, to to make that thing happen i think you bring up a really good uh point here about selling your one selling your ideas selling your design selling your work it's it's about like uh, to summarize, it's about getting that ownership and making everyone involved and handing everyone that paintbrush and saying, this is our mural. Let's, let's, let's get to it. Right. Right. Yeah. Don't, don't designers out there. Don't hijack your designs. Yeah. Like don't hijack them. Don't try to hog the, the design for yourself. Share it with everyone within the company, everyone who's going to be working on it at some point in time. You have data scientists have feedback from the data scientists, you know, have them come in and say, you know, what do you think? Even if it's a color change and that has nothing to do with data science, you know, they, they see it and they walk away from it already thinking of ways that they can make that happen. So when it lands on their table, they've seen it before and they know mm -hmm. exactly how it works. I'm a part of that painting. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, it's one thing I like to do is I like to design, uh, create mock-ups. And then, it, you know, and usually this is when, when I was a consultant, um, I would stand in front of the entire, you know, business side of the, the team, um, pretty much the, sh the stakeholders on the project. And I would get feedback from them. And sometimes, you know, when you're in that situation, you're in a you're in a clustered room and you have the CEO in front of you, you need to say something. You have to understand the position these people are in. They have to say something so that the CEO doesn't think that they're there just wasting air and mm -hmm. heating up the room, you know, <laughs> releasing carbon dioxide into the room. So what they usually tend to do is they tend to say something like, I don't like the way that looks there, or I don't like the way that looks there. Do they really? Nah, they probably had, they needed something to say, right? They needed to put their little two cents in, right? So remember that. I always say, 
next to the feedback that you're writing down, write down the name of the person who said it, right? If it's, it, and most of my reviews were conversational. So it was more like, yeah, mm -hmm, listening to them, taking down notes, write down who said it. And then when you make revisions, even if you don't change anything and you come back to the design and you go, oh yeah, Dave, remember that you said that you wanted this larger? Well, yeah, we've adjusted it. We made it look a little bit larger. We made it look a little bit, did I change anything? No, but I made it look larger by maybe shifting it to the side, maybe moving it down two pixels. <laughs> I, Just a little different saying? change, yeah. Remember when you said you had that great idea and then add to it. You had that great idea to do this. You remember? And he's gonna be like, yeah, you're giving him credit in front of his, giving him super cool props in front kudos. of his CEOs. Yeah, super kudos. <laughs> Wait, it goes so to you. Like, hey, you remember? Yeah, so Dave had this great idea of, you know, so I'll be like, Dave had this great idea of adding, you know, making it look bigger. So what I did was I removed the border and I did this. So what do you guys think? Yeah, I think it looks so much. And they're like, and Dave's gonna be like, so much better now, cause it was his idea. <laughs> apparently so much better now yeah i like it better thank goodness for dave or he might say you know what i like it the way it was in which case you don't have to change anything because you never did from the beginning so you say <laughs> okay I'll, I'll i'll turn it down then you know but it, it there that that's all it takes that's all it takes to to get them emotionally connected to that design emotionally invested and you got them removing that's the it. friction by you just getting anything them invested else, Anything else that comes across, it could be the ugliest thing. And it doesn't matter because they already did their part. There's so many uh, little bits of learning here that are incredibly valuable here, you know, and I think you've helped out a lot of people. And I'm sure there's going to be some people that uh, go to work tomorrow and <laughs> try to uh, um, employ these ideas. That, that's great. I love it. I'm yeah. getting jiggy with it. Yeah. Why isn't anybody else dancing? <laughs> Everybody's yeah. putting I mean, in their two weeks tomorrow and going to work with you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, guys, I got hired because I was, you know, just silly. I was a goof, you know, just because you are a goof and you like to have fun doesn't mean that you can't get to a position of leadership. You can't get to do the thing that you love. You always have to make sure that you're having fun while you're getting things done. And remember, don't beat yourself up trying to hijack and trying to own your designs for yourself because that's putting more work on you. You want more time to have a good time. So you know what you do? You get everybody involved and you make everyone help you with doing your job. And then what you do is you get involved with their jobs and you help them out to try and do their jobs. Stay with it. Don't just, you know, don't get into these, this bad habit of being in silos where you hand off a design and that's the last time you see it. And then when it comes back around, you're like, that's not what I designed. Well, you don't know what happened. You don't know that they came back and they couldn't do this and they couldn't do that. And then something happened with the database where they weren't getting the name. So they had to scratch the name out of the design. Like, you don't know these things. These There's a whole bunch of things that can pop up from, from, you know, from one UI, you pass it through. It doesn't look the way it looks, but where were you during that journey of removing the name, pushing it to the side, nixing this one feature, getting rid of that one feature, adding this one thing in. I mean, there's a lot of factors. One customer can come in and say, well, we like to look at our franchises, for example. You know, can we do that in there? We ended up scratching an entire chart and putting in an entire table in a design once. We didn't plan for it, but feedback told us otherwise. Um, so stick with it. Work with the developers. Help them as much as you know, help them as much as you can try and get it out. And remember, always give everyone ownership. Make sure everyone has a slice of the pie because everyone will invest the time to get it done. They'll well, if everyone like has a slice of the pie, your work becomes a piece of cake. Yeah. Hey. Oh. 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 
Um, Frederick, that was so incredibly (laughs) random. That seems very random. Is that random? I will curtsy. You know, before we keep, uh, before we go, uh, because I know we could keep on going on time short, I think Brian brings up a good point that we have a random contest winner. (laughs) We will just announce our contest winner for ViewConf. Surprise, Let's go ahead, I everybody. Win. No, Sorry? <laughs> I said surprise, I win. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Done and done. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share no, my no. screen and I'm going to show everybody that we have a bunch of uh, people that are want to win these tickets. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So okay, I imagine Whoa. you guys can see my screen. I'm going to move this over. We know some of these people. Like, Let's see. Let's that's see. An, yeah. That's so, an adorable poodle on your background. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I love to collect poodles. They're not mine, but I collect them. So we have uh, 33 people entered in. So I'm going to go to the good old randomizer. And I'm going to say uh, minimum one, two to 34. And I'm going to hit generate. And we're going to pick a winner. Are we ready? Drum roll, roll, roll. and the winner is number seven. And number seven is Brian. Can you read this out loud? Uh, you're Rodolfo making me. Roman. I can do it. I can do it. Go it's ahead, Rodolfo Roman V. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> you are the winner. <laughs> the winner to the contest. Congratulations. We'll be tweeting that out in just a little bit. Yeah, congrats. Do you yeah, know how you say conference in Spanish? El conference. <laughs> El conference. I like that. That's El conference. Great. Yeah. Well, the congratulations to our winner. We'll be uh, tweeting that out in a little bit. And man, so so happy that you could uh, get to go to View Conference. Yeah, it's exciting. That's, yeah. that's a really awesome thing to win. So congrats. Yeah. Yay! So, uh, Brian, we are getting to the end of the show. Do you want to jump in with your questions? Yes, I do. I have a spotlight question for the group. It's a, it's a super scary question. Try I not try, to make me cry again. Yeah, I'm trying not to make Frederick. This one's really rough. Uh, it'll be a hard Ooh. one for Frederick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, it, what is it, – and, by the way, this question is like a get-to-know-you-more type question. Oh, and, and it's uh, also yeah. – It's me a add, group question. A group question. We'll yeah. all go first before you yeah. – you know. Yeah. What is in your fridge right now? Oh. Oh, let's see. He's olives. <laughs> So uh, mine, um, it's there's a lot in the fridge, but I generally there's cupcakes and cake in the fridge because, uh, well, you know, Rachel bakes a lot. So, <laughs> Frederick. <laughs> oh, I have in the fridge supplies to make turkey meatball subs, which uh, we make every Friday wow. night. So I'm really excited. We Wait. just got all the stuff to so, make it for tomorrow. But uh, yeah, like meatballs, meat- like actual. Yeah, like yeah. So I get the you know the turkey. I make my own uh, bread. You grind it up and everything. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I don't grind. No, it's cool. it's ground turkey. But yeah, well, yeah, you know, I use we have basil, oregano plants, and parsley. Put all that in there. Make my own breadcrumbs. Season them rather. Um, yeah, super excited. Love it. Oh, nice. Well, uh, my fridge is completely now stocked up with every cheese you can possibly imagine. I'm jelly. Uh, I it's pretty amazing. So Gouda? I currently have, uh, yes, uh, we have mozzarella. some kind of pesto. Yes, we have actually three different kinds of mozzarella. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we found this really cute little uh, uh cheese shop, and we're just like, yes, buy all the cheese. <laughs> And so now our refrigerator is made of cheese. What about monster? <laughs> oh, oh, I don't think we have monster. Sorry. I think it's, isn't, it, isn't it monster cheese? Let me have my joke. Okay. <laughs> yes. Please, please, Brian. Monster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you, Yvette. I have blue cheese olives. <gasps> a lot of jars. Oh, a lot. I'm dude, talking make about martinis? 12 jars of blue cheese <gasps> olives and then one Whoa. large jar. I'm a fanatic. That's all. Do you snack I, them yourself? I sneak. I I snack on them. Like Ooh, I'll go through a jar a day. Do, wow. do, do you do wow. the martinis, or are you doing it like a no, just, dirty martini? Just right out of the jar in the mouth. Oh, right I know, I know, but I'm saying, do you also do the martinis? I I martini. don't, but when I go to the bar, uh-huh. I will. If I get a cocktail, I'll ask for blue cheese olives, not to put in the cocktail, just to eat. Oh, yeah, they're good. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, when they give me three, I'm like, "What do you own this bar?" Like, <laughs> more. <laughs> Question: So they make blue cheese olives like 
in the jar already? Yes. Aldi's have them. It's insane. I love Aldi's because I'll go and I'll buy them all out. I will go just all the ones they have. Oh my gosh, my mind is blown. Hey, where, Janelle's packing up right now. Where's Janelle? Where are you going? Her mind is blown. <laughs> I'm gonna go to Aldi because I'm they gonna have, go get some blue. Yeah, they also have cheddar cheese, Vermont cheddar cheese olives, and they have feta cheese olives. Ooh. Okay, we gotta we gotta finish this podcast right <laughs> Christy now. Christy has to go to Aldi. Need to go. I need hey, we're hurry up. What, why don't we swing by and pick me up? <laughs> why don't we move to our lightning round? We're gonna do a lightning yeah. round of questions. Questions that we are rando and questions that we might not have been able to ans- uh, ask you as well. So we're gonna just do some quick questions. We're all gonna cycle through. And uh, if uh, Brian, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, what's your uh, favorite cereal? Is it me again? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. These are all for you. My favorite cereal is definitely Golden Grams. Nice, Jeanette. Yeah. Oh, I'm Janelle. Is that I'm okay? sorry, Janelle. Okay. <laughs> I was talking yeah. to our, our buddy Jeanette just a little bit ago. Golden oh, Grams. true. <laughs> uh, what is your? Uh, I need to have this at all times in my handbag or backpack item. Oh, my vape, extra vape juice. Yeah, I go around, I, I don't leave the house without it. I'll leave my credit card because I have my Apple Pay. I won't leave <laughs> <laughs> Right, I like my vape, my uh, Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> last uh, book that you have been reading or currently reading? Oh, the last book was A Discovery of Witches. Ooh, you know what? Just so you know, there's a uh, show that. Yes! They, yeah, I know. I'm so excited. They started doing it in uh, the old Britain across the pond. I, and I'm so excited to watch it. I don't like the, the, the guy that they chose to play the. The vampire? Uh, yeah, the vampire, but I'm like, yeah, okay. I guess. Yeah, yeah. The, that story is so cool. I want to yes, see that. I know, is I is it gonna be on Netflix? Or... Uh, I don't know uh, what it's, it's gonna Sun, be on, but Sun Channel, Sundance Channel, or oh. maybe stars. Anything with oh. like vampires, <laughs> blood, and witches, I'm in. It's, it. it's one of those. It's oh. one of those like historical empowering channels that just yeah. like do. Maybe documentaries. be on history. They do a lot of time travel. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. the aliens. Uh, yeah, ancient aliens. Oh yeah, oh, ancient God. aliens. I'm sold. Yeah, that was like my that. Friday night it's, show for a while. It's all yes. real. It's all real. Yeah. It's all real. It's all real. Hey, <laughs> and my favorite part is like some of those guys where they have those funny accents and they go, "Could it be?" And like they do like this big boom, 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 and they close up into the guy and he looks really serious and they and he goes, "Possibly, maybe." <laughs> Possibly, maybe. Possibly, maybe. And that, <laughs> that that's supposed me. to be like a definitive, like, oh my God. Yeah, it reminds me of the Ghost Hunter stuff, uh, those uh, shows, how they're, they're always like, did you hear that noise? <laughs> and it's just, a, it's just like a branch that's, rush. That's all it is. So it's always, did you hear that noise? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we should split up. Yes. Oh, I love- yes. Why? Yes. Why? Why? <laughs> They don't have yes. yeah. Hey, hey, why don't we cover more ground by you going to the first <laughs> floor? And I'm like, no, incorrect. I'm this take house. the basement, Steve. Yeah, I'm <laughs> take yeah Steve, will, Steve will always get the basement. The graveyard yeah. in the backyard, please. You can you can take the graveyard in the backyard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll let Dave have that one. <laughs> Those guys. Speaking of basement, what's your uh, favorite cartoon as a child? <laughs> My uh, favorite cartoon as a child. Oh, had- speaking of child. Baby human! Baby, sorry. Baby human! I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. What are you talking about? Hi! <laughs> <Hello. laughs> he was supposed to stay in his room. Oh, I'm like, kid. What are you room. kidding? No, I, we're, I, I have really? a four year old. Well, I got a naked boy back here. Yeah, <laughs> he's adorable. Hi! Favorite cartoon as a kid, I would have to say, was, oh man, as a kid. Probably, I watched a lot of Pokemon, like when Ash was there. Um, I did. I watched a lot of. Um, let me see. I'd say a lot of uh, Looney. I did Looney Tunes too, but I th- think one that I watched every single episode is probably. I I watched a lot of Daria. 
<laughs> Daria, um, I remember yes, that. I did. Oh, um, I would have to say the one that I watched religiously was Rugrats. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Rugrats so, is good. <laughs> yeah. Rugrats was religiously. Yeah. Oh, on Nickelodeon. Yep. He's, no, he's eating something. It's oh, not a band aid. Okay, good. Hey, what's your favorite cartoon, buddy? <laughs> His favorite cartoon is. Paw Patrol? No, he watches. Um, he does it. This is there's this weird phenomenon now where kids go on YouTube to watch other kids play video games. They don't play video yeah. games themselves. He watches other kids play video games and other kids play with toys. Does so he, he watch does, Mr. Sparkles. No, he watches this one kid, uh, Ryan's Toys or Toys Ryan. Oh, yeah. Is that the, the, the kid who opens? Yeah, Ry oh, Ryan's Toy Review. Thank yeah. you. He corrected me. Yeah. Ryan's Toy Review. And it's pretty much a kid named Ryan playing with toys. Yeah, yeah he, we, he makes millions of dollars, too. Yes, he's yeah. like one of the richest YouTubers. Which is crazy. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get some toys. Yeah, he <laughs> likes watching watching kids play um, with toys, and he likes watching uh, roadblocks when they start narrating what they're doing on roadblocks. And it's pretty much just guys in a small screen and then the roadblocks game. And it's like, oh, no, I fell. All right, I'm going to try to go around. <laughs> oh, no, I fell again. Like, <laughs> I guess that's, that's something. Cute. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. You know, we're just about at the end of the show. So I, I want to give you an opportunity to uh, bestow any kind of final words of wisdom to the audience. It has to be deep and meaningful. Super no deep and meaningful. No pressure. Now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Next level stuff. Meaningful. <laughs> or not. Or not. In everything you do, if you want less friction going forward, be more receptive to others and bring people in. Emotional connections is what you need in the workplace with your designs, not necessarily you to your design, but your product owners to your design, your your developers to your design. You That's want great. that emotional connection because once people feel like they have a stake in it, your job becomes super easy. Yeah. And cool. that's what I'm gonna guys tell you. Just let go. Learn learn to let go. Yeah, it's about that investment in people. I love that. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we're 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 out of time. What's the best way people get get a hold of you? A website, Twitter handle, whatnot. What do you got? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's Yannette Olivo, pretty much on everything except in Instagram. It's just Yannette, but Yannette Olivo on LinkedIn. Yannette Olivo on and Yannette. I actually was one of. I got my name so. Yay. And then there's, what? and I own Yannette.com. So you guys can go in there, check it out. Give me a call if you want to just chat. Nice. That's awesome. And obviously we'll put links to all that in the show notes. Yannette, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Super thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for having me. You guys are great. I love what you guys are doing here. I mean, it's amazing. I, I, I feel like we need to get a lot more people involved in sharing um, just their experiences within the company and we have we have to push designers and push a lot more people to become that meta employee that sort of employee that becomes what the company needs them to be and is not so wrapped up in staying where they are like branch out as much as you can the more you know and the more experience you have under your belt the more valuable you become as an employee you know yeah. it's about that partnership yep yeah well, Yannette, thank you so much. Anybody else got anything? No, nope. great having you on the show. Yeah, you're amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank All right. you so much, I'm Yannette. waiting for you so we can go to Aldi's. All right, let's go. Let's All go. Right. <laughs> I want to go. Let's go. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye, guys. <laughs> See you next time.